I want to put just the word fighting, how to fight on the chip. Yeah. But like people aren't going to buy that. If we aren't making a living, we can't continue to help people. So we have to be yeah. able to sell it. So you're almost forced to put a name on what you're doing. We, we moved away from calling what we were doing. Come guy, it did hurt. What we are doing is teaching people how to fight. But that, that has a certain connotation to people, you know? Um, people think that that means a certain thing, especially in reality-based world, has, has made a big deal out of making a distinct, distinction between self-defense and fighting, and I think it's bullshit. If somebody is teaching self-defense and, and they're not doing some kind of live sparring, rolling, whatever, then they're just, they're, they're either willfully ignorant or they're, they're just willfully lying to their, their students. You got me? I got half of you. Mm, now better? you're centered. Yeah, you're centered now. Is it, yep. is it not centered on yours? Not even a little bit. That's well, I hope that works. Well, here's what I think when people think they're learning how to fight. They think that's going to be hard, right? Yeah. And it's going to require oh, them yeah. to like, spar and do reps and become stronger and fitter. And when they hear combatives or fighting method or system or Krav Maga, that evokes a, well, I don't have to become good at fighting. I'll just know a move and I'll flip the big guy. But the truth is, and you and I are both big proponents of this, being stronger is better, being faster is better, having endurance, having physical attributes is better, all that's better. In order to defend yourself, you have to be good at fighting. Yes. Yeah, and, I, and that's a hard sell. I think the self-defense world, maybe the martial arts world has done a really good job of selling people on technique. Let's collect some techniques. They really just want to be able to learn some techniques to be able to not hurt somebody and just escape, you know, and that shit just is not real. That's, it's not. When, when we get contacted to do seminars and they ask me about the curriculum, they think it's going to be like hair grab escape, wrist escape. And if I've got yeah. total is we spend two hours pretty much fighting for collar ties and uh, trying not to get front head locked and maybe learning how to sprawl by the end. And that's like I mean, even a small group. That's all we get through. It's been yeah. basically like the, your first day of wrestling class. And I'm right. like, because that's right. the shit they need to know. I did a course a few months ago for um, some federal – uh, police officers, but it was all wrestling. Like, you know, and, and you could tell from the first 30 minutes that we were in there, they were like, what the f are we doing? You know, cause it was hard. It was work. It was like hard. It's hard. <laughs> yes. You know, we're hand fighting and, and, and drags and pummeling and inside oh. biceps control and these things. Excuse me, sir. My wrist is really like getting red when we're doing this. Yes. Shit is hard, man. It, it, it's, I don't know. It, it's it's frustrating. I understand it. I understand why people are, are have this reticence about it. I just and, and and I know that I could sell a lot more memberships and a lot more DVDs and a lot more seminars if if I did it a different way. I just can't. I can't make myself do it for long term purposes. I think that's even more valuable. I think and you know this you staying true to yourself doing what is right. Even in the short term, if it's not as like fiscally lucrative, long term, that's that's going to be better. How many how many affiliates do you have? Uh, we're about twenty two, something like that. What are you talking about it's hard to sell. <laughs> <laughs> it, this is a pretty ego driven industry we're in too, you know. And so you start getting things start getting big, things start getting popular, people start wanting their piece or whatever and think that they're doing more than somebody else is and you know i mean it's, it's human nature to a degree but i think it's maybe a little bit more prevalent and widespread in martial arts because it there is a large ego factor do you know what helps with that fucking sparring man having your ass kicked <laughs> you know i was a black belt in some bullshit and i was like i want to try this brazilian jiu-jitsu stuff back when and there was a guy and i'd been doing martial arts my entire life and there was a guy who'd been there for six months and he beat the shit out of me all day long and yeah. moment i never had an ego about martial arts again i was like dude there's always someone that knows more always someone that can kick my ass and about every few years i'm gonna look back on everything that i used to think and realize that i didn't know what i was talking about and uh 
But oh, yeah. I think I could go. I, I think I think a decent high school wrestler is gonna hand most martial artists their ass. Yeah. You know. I mean, and that's that's a really hard thing for people to get their heads around, especially if that's something that they've been doing 10, 15, 20 years, um, and they've bought in and they I think it's really hard for people to look back and say that what I was doing, what I did do, what I said, what I taught, what I wrote, what I whatever, I was wrong. That's, That's fucking hard to do, man. It really is. And and especially when you got somebody saying, not only were you wrong, but a seventeen year old high school wrestler will kick your ass. The last day of sparring that we had here before our shutdown, a seventeen year old high school wrestler came in here and kicked my ass. I could defend his first two shots and then that was it because i'm yeah. gas i'm old as shit and i don't wrestle so i was good for one good for two and then i'm on my back like yeah. that and 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 you do this this is what you do <laughs> you know, the I mean, like, seriously. so now uh, now imagine that the guy that is training twice a week he's a f-ing accountant and he's taking yeah. karma guy classes twice a week you know and he's got some instructor that not only is not having him spar, not having him getting, you know, real pressure all the time, but he's saying, okay, here's a knife, and all you have to do is, you know, and it's it, it's it's a block and a punch. We talk about sparring and how, how sparring is important for, and you do this, and we do this, and I know other places that are self-defense first, we do classes that are sportive in nature. Like I have a boxing class and I have a kickboxing class. And yep. it's just boxing tech. Like we don't. It's not like always dirty boxing or like sure. also sure. with breaking strikes. We just box. Yeah, and yeah we have yeah. sparring and kickboxing sparring. And some people would say that that's not that's of limited value in self defense. And I'm like, no, it's not because I'm punching these dudes in the face and they're punching me in the face. And that way, when we go out there and get punched in the face, we don't freak the fuck out. Yep. I, I tell people all the time: the first time you get punched in your life should not be when you're between two cars with your eight-year-old kid, you know, like that should not be the time to find out whether you can take that shot or not. Cause the truth is you can take it, but if you haven't done it in training, there's going to be this, this gap where you're like, Holy fuck, that sucked. What do I do now? You know, like that you should experience those ass kickings inside the dojo, inside the training center, inside the gym, inside the, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You should experience that. And you should experience it a lot. And I, and I think I think that's the other thing that's hard about the way that we do things is people don't like to fail. People don't like the idea of failure. People look at failure as as an end as, instead of a, as a, a beginning. And in here, man, you're going to fail a lot. Like I tell people all the time, I've learned way more from being tapped than I ever have from tapping somebody. The most important martial arts or self-defense lesson I ever learned was the second time that my nose was broken. Because the first time my nose got broken, I went, oh my God, you know, it was in sparring. Yeah. I went, what is wrong with me? Like, it, yeah. it, a terrible oh. feeling for oh, those yeah. of you watching that have never felt it. it. I was like, this is terrible. But that wasn't the best lesson, the most important lesson I received. It was the second time. It was in my second kickboxing fight. The guy broke my nose. And I laughed at him and said, Bitch, you got to do better than that. Because yeah, you've, <laughs> you've been there before, right? I still lost that fight. Full, full disclaimer to everybody. I still lost the fight. But in that moment, he was like, oh, my God. Because he thought, he was like, for sure, that's it. And I was like. Yeah. No, it's it's 100% true, man. And, and that's why I think combat sports, for the most part, have it right. You know, when it, when it comes. If, if I just had to say, okay. You've got two choices. I don't know shit about either place you're going to, but one's an MMA gym and one's a Krav Maga Center. I, I would have to send you to the MMA gym if your goal was self-defense. I just would. Like, if just two generic centers, I don't know anything about either one of them, I would send you to the MMA place. No, actually, I hate that. I know that at the MMA place, you're going to get resistance. I know at the MMA place, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be pushed. <laughs> You're going to get hit. You're going to get tapped. You know, you're going to want to quit. You're going to think this sucks. So sparring, rolling, wrestling rounds, live rounds, 
even under sportive rule sets and contexts hold value for self-defense? Not only does it hold value, I think it's I think it's absolutely necessary. I think if if if, if somebody is teaching self-defense outside of you know some kind of short form you know intro to self-defense seminar or whatever. Um, and, and they're not doing some kind of live sparring, rolling, whatever, then they're just, they're, they're either willfully ignorant or they're, they're just willfully lying to their, their students. Uh-huh.